In this video, we're going to look at the equation y equals x squared. So let's go ahead and graph this. And if you analyze the equation, it's telling us to take the x value and to square it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's look at this x value of 3. And remember, the x values are along the horizontal axis here. So if x is 3 and we square it, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So I'll go up to 9 right here right over here. And now let's do the same thing with 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Right over here. And then I'll look at this x value of 1. 1 squared is 1 times 1, which is 1. Right over here. 0 squared is just 0 times 0, which is 0. And then we'll do the same thing with the negative x values. And remember, the equation is telling us to take the x values and square them. So let's do negative 3. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. Right up here. Right over here. Remember, negative times negative is a positive. So if I square negative 2, I get negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. Right here. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1 right here. And now let's go ahead and make the graph. Do the best I can. And it's looks like the letter U, so that's a good thing to remember. And we're going to call this graph in blue the parent function, the original function that I'm working with. Now I want to mess around with this function. For the first problem I'm going to do, I'm going to stretch this graph in blue. I want to pretend like I'm pulling up on it vertically and it's going to make the graph appear to be skinnier. So to do that, I'm going to take my equation of y equals x squared, and I'm going to multiply the x squared by a number greater than 1. How about 3? So I'll take the x squared value and multiply it by 3. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to go to my x squared values over here, and this x squared value is 9. Remember, my x squared values are here. My x values are here. So this x squared value is 9. I'm going to multiply that 9 by 3 from right here because it says 3 times x squared. And 9 times 3 is 27. Well, 27 is all the way up here. I don't have the room for that. So let's go to this x squared value of 4. 4 times 3 is 12. So I'm going to vertically stretch this to a 12. That's why we call this a vertical stretch. So it goes to 12 over here. Now I'm going to stretch this x squared value of 1. 1 times 3 is 3. I'll stretch this, this x squared value to 3. 0 times 3 is just 0. That stays at 0. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. This x squared value is 1. 1 times 3 is stretched to 3 right here. This is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. There you go. And I'm not going to do this point. I don't have the room. So our new graph, this is called our transform graph, appears to be skinnier. And that's how you vertically stretch graph. You multiply the x squared value by some number greater than 1. And if you had to describe this transformation, you would say the parent function in blue was vertically stretched by a factor of 3. And it makes the graph appear to be skinnier. Let's try another one here. Let's say I wanted to take this graph y equals x squared, or this equation, and flatten the graph, make it appear wider. So let's quickly graph this. Uh, 3 squared is 9. You'll get quick at graphing this as you get more practice. 2 squared is 4. 1 squared is 1. And so on. I'm just going to fill these points in quickly. And negative 3 squared right up here is 9. And I'll sketch my y equals x squared. That's my parent function. It's a little messy this time, but you get the idea, I hope. And now let's flatten this thing. Let's make it appear wider. Pretend that you're flattening down on the graph. It's called a vertical compression. And to do that, you multiply the x squared value by some number less than 1 but greater than zero, kind of like multiplying it by the fraction one-third, one-half, or two-fifths, or something like that. So in this situation, I'm going to multiply it by one-half. 
and you're going to see that that's going to vertically compress the graph. So we're going to take the x squared value values and multiply them by one half, which is the same as dividing by two from right here. So let's start with this x squared value. This x squared value is nine. Nine half of nine is the same as nine divided by two, which is 4.5. So I'm going to vertically shrink this. That's another word you can use a vertical shrink. So half of nine is 4.5 right there. Boom. Now I'm going to look at this x squared value, which is four. I'll take half of four, which is two right over here. Now this x squared value is one. Half of one is 0.5. It's kind of hard to see, but there's 0.5. Same thing on the other side. By the way, half of zero is just zero. Now half of one is 0.5 or one half, which is right here. Then this x squared value is four. Half of four is two. I'll shrink that down to two right here. And this x squared value is nine. Half of nine, that's the same as nine divided by two is 4.5, which is right here. So that's shrunk down to 4.5 right there. And let's look at the new graph. The new graph is in red and it appears to be wider. There we go. And if you had to describe this transformation, you would say that the blue graph, the parent function, was vertically compressed by a factor of one half. And that makes it appear to be wider. So to make a graph appear to be wider or to vertically shrink it, you multiply the x squared value by some number less than one but greater than zero. Let's look at a couple more. I'm going to do two more examples. Let's say I wanted to take y equals x squared and reflect it over the x-axis. So let me put in y equals x squared real quick. And you'll get fast at this too. So this is y equals x squared. And what I want to do in this situation is take it and flip it over the x-axis or reflect the blue graph, the parent function, over the x-axis. To do that, all you need to do is put a negative sign in front of the x squared. So what this negative sign means is right here is to take the opposite of the x squared value. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the opposite of x squared. You're really multiplying x squared by negative 1. But I look at it as the opposite. So let's look here. This x squared value is 4. The opposite of 4 from right here is negative 4. So this is going to go to a negative 4 right over here. This x squared value is 1. The opposite of 1 is negative 1 right here. The opposite of 0 is just 0. The opposite of 1 is negative 1 over here. And the opposite of 4 is negative 4 right over here. So when you have a negative sign in front of the x squared, it causes a reflection or a flip over the x-axis. You're really multiplying by negative 1. So to describe this transformation, you would say the parent function, which is, which is in blue, was reflected over the x-axis. And let's look at one more. Let's say I had this. y equals negative 2x squared. Okay. Before I do this, let me just put in y equals x squared. Again, it starts here. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared goes up to 4. 3 squared goes up to 9. And then negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. Let me get that in the right spot. And negative 3 squared is 9. So here's the parent function again. This is y equals x squared. There we go. Got it. Now what I'm going to do is multiply the x squared value from right here times negative 2. So the x squared value times negative 2 from right here. So let's do that. We'll take each x squared value and multiply it by negative 2 and let's see what happens here. 
So this x squared value is 9. 9 times negative 2 from right here is negative 18. So I'm going to reflect this. I'm going to put this all the way over to negative 18. I don't have room for that one, so we're not going to do this point. Let's look at this x squared value of 4. We're going to multiply that by negative 2. What's 4 times negative 2? Well, that's negative 8, so i got to find negative 8, and it's right here. So the new x squared value is negative 8. Remember, I'm multiplying by negative 2 from right here. This x squared value is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. So i got to find the x squared value of negative 2, which is right here. 0 times negative 2 is just 0. Then I'll do the same thing over here. This x squared value is 1 right here. And 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, which shows up right here. And let's see. This x squared value is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, which shows up over here. Right here. And I'm not going to do this one because this would be 9 times negative 2, which is negative 18, and I don't have room for that. So here's my new graph. So two things happened here. Here's how you would describe it. The negative sign, or let's look at the 2 first. This 2 causes the graph to vertically stretch by a factor of 2, and this negative sign causes a reflection over the x-axis. So two things happen. So to describe this transformation, you would say the following. The parent function, which is in blue, was stretched by a factor of 2 and reflected over the x-axis. And that's how you would describe the change. And remember, when you multiply by this 2 here, not looking at the negative sign, but this times 2 makes the graph appear to be skinnier. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. Have a great day.